All right, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Starting off, what do you do? Well, it's actually quite complicated, first question. So I am technically a mechanical engineer. I have all the qualifications for that. At the moment, I'm actually doing nothing engineering related. I'm in a little bit of a career break and I'm a full-time content creator. That is insane. And also the dream career of any like tween or yeah, teenager. Yeah, I'm very much enjoying it. So, <laughs> Have you gotten to kind of drop it to anyone and then just be like, that's not real. You're actually just unemployed. <laughs> or sometimes like, actually, this is, this is very relevant and very recent. Someone paid for a cameo from Abby Lee Miller. For me, for my birthday, which was yesterday. Happy birthday to me. That's amazing. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, And in it, they must have told her that I was a YouTuber. And she was like, content creation is not a real job. You know what's (laughs) a real job? Running a dance studio. And I was like, (laughs) I mean, true. Yeah. But the attack wasn't necessary. You're also a content creator, Abby. But um, yeah, so sometimes people think that it's not a real job. They think that I'm getting paid like millions a day. (laughs) I'm like, it's very much not the case. Oh. But um. Yeah, I'm definitely enjoying what I'm doing. So. Yeah, good. At school, we were always told, don't have anything on social media. You'll never get a job. Mm-hmm. If your boss can Google you, your career's over. Yeah. Is that true? I mean, I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I think it is true. There are some people that are in the social media space that you can definitely tell haven't been in a professional or corporate environment, which is fine. It's not hmm. for everyone. But sometimes I think see things and I'm like, yeah, if I was your boss and I saw that, I'd think, hmm, this is interesting, like sharing everything with everyone. But it's totally up to the person who's making the content and what they want to talk about and what the limits are. Some jobs say, talk about whatever you want. You can mm. talk about the work that you do. And then that comes down to a personal decision. And then for me, it was, I'd like to separate the two. Yeah. Because a lot of what, how I run my, my own podcast and my YouTube channel and Twitch and everything like that and my own brand, I try and keep them in silos. So if something goes wrong in one of them, mm. then I can keep operating the other ones. Yeah. If everything's interchanged all the time, then if one thing goes wrong, then everything can go wrong. Yeah, totally. So it's more about insurance, I guess. Yeah, always having mm. something to work on. Exactly. Thinking about how, you know, in your creative side of your career, you mm-hmm. have to have a personal brand. Mm-hmm. Are any of those kinds of skills, do you think, beneficial back in the corporate engineering world? For sure. Because as much as it sucks... The way that it works when you meet someone is how you present yourself online and in person Mm. is what they see before they even talk to you. So if you're emailing someone and your emailing is like really casual and everything, that's what they're expecting when they see you. So kind of preparing yourself for what you want them to see you as, that's probably one of the things that I've ported over from YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. You're not just out. You're sending everyone dance moms memes no. before. <laughs> in Only emails. specific people get the dance moms memes. <laughs> Lucky people. Yeah. Would you, if you met someone new, would you say, "Hi, I'm Michael, and I'm a YouTuber, engineer, human being"? Mm. What do you? What would you have gone for? Mm, good question. I would probably. I don't actually mention the YouTube stuff until a little bit in. Mm. There was a ton of projects that I worked on, and nobody knew a thing. Yeah, I was just like. An engineer that sometimes get to work five minutes late and look really tired. <laughs> Why is he so tired? You never know. Is he running a cartel? We don't yeah. know. Um, but then there were some projects where everyone already knew and then someone from the client would recognise me and it'd just be something that we would talk about. But yep. the two things would never really intersect beyond that. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point, actually, that it wouldn't necessarily interfere yeah. with your day-to-day work. How yeah. on earth did you balance them, though? Clearly not well if you're super tired. Uh, the, <laughs> I would say the start of this year... I kind of had it under control, but then because I was working in Melbourne and then I came back to Perth during the 5-2, which they refer to <laughs> COVID-19, um, I was working Melbourne hours, so it was like two hours difference and then it was three hours difference, mm-hmm. but then the thing with YouTube is it's so US-centric, especially if you analyse the data, mm. which is what I did and how I became successful, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> um, you have to be available for the audience that watches you the most, and that's the US and the UK. Yeah, wow. And the prime time for that is early morning for Perth mm-hmm. and a little bit later in Melbourne. So sometimes in Melbourne, I would post at 7, 8 a.m. and it'd be fine, so I'd be up anyway. But in Perth, I'd have to be up at 2, 3 a.m. Oh. replying to comments and that kind of stuff. And then I'd start work at 7, which sucked a little bit. Yeah. But it was fine. Up until a point, and then it wasn't fine, so I quit. <laughs> yeah, which is completely fair. I have no idea. I honestly don't think I could do that for one day, let alone however many months that you did it. The thing is, I like having something to do, 
So when I you're meant to be sleeping. <laughs> Sleeping's boring. I've said this so many times. I'm like, if I didn't have to sleep, I'd be so productive. Yeah. The amount of things I'd be able to do. That's Imagine true. being able to work 24 hours. I mean, no one wants to. But work on different things. Yeah. I, I don't feel like YouTube is work, mm. but it technically is because it's what I do for money. Yeah. But then if I could do that 24 hours, just the quality of the videos, <laughs> you know, it'd be insane. A 24-hour stream? Sure, why not? Oh, uh, Katy Perry did it. You're next. Exactly. And that, that kind of destroyed her brand, so maybe that wouldn't be good for no, me. No, I really wouldn't. But it's on the horizon, maybe, so. <laughs> when you first started your channel, mm -hmm. you're obviously still at university. Yeah, final year. Why? Why? Why'd you start? Well, I used to watch a lot of YouTube, so I would go to the library. I had friends. Let's just preface that I had friends. I do have friends now, but I don't have as many friends as people think. People mm. think that I'm like, oh, you must have so many friends. How do you have time to do all this stuff? Because everyone wants to talk to you. <laughs> Not really true. But at uni, I would, because I live quite far away from the university in Perth, so I would go for the whole day. Mm. Even if I had a couple of classes, I would go in the morning and then go to the library and do work. And then I just watch YouTube videos in my time off during lunch and that kind of thing. And I thought, why can't I do this? Yeah. Like these people, they seem reasonable, like personality wise, but like, that's it. Yeah. So I thought, why don't I just give it a go? And it didn't really go anywhere for a few years. Pretty much the whole time I was at uni, it didn't really go anywhere mm -hmm. because I'd post like every couple of months. Yeah. Because obviously uni was the focus. But then once I moved to Melbourne and I had like, as many friends as I could count on one hand <laughs> and they were all busy all the time. Yeah. So I'd be like, I may as well just post one video a week and see how it goes. Mm. And then it just kind of escalated from there. Yeah, I do like yeah. the way that when you talk about your YouTube growth, it's not just, oh, I was like making stuff and one day it just happened by chance. Absolutely not. Yeah. Could you talk us through a little bit about how you, you game the system? How did you win okay. YouTube? They kind of just give you everything you need to do it. It's Everyone's like, how do you... <laughs> manage to get successful on YouTube. I'm like, just read the data. Like, <laughs> not not everyone can read the data. That's a good and no point. one wants to. The data is available though. Yes. And it's free and it's easy to read. Mm. It's just you need to know what to look for. Yeah. So the thing with YouTube is it's all about money for them. Mm -hmm. So if you work out how YouTube makes money, then you can work out how to push your own content and then how to maximize your own growth. So I worked out pretty early on that YouTube maximizes watch time because the longer you're watching, the more likely you are to watch an ad. Mm -hmm. So then they make money when you make money. Everybody wins. So I worked out how to increase my retention time. So what percentage of the video people are watching. And then based off of that and what kind of content people were responding to, then I'd kind of hone into those areas, which is how I ended up talking so much about reality TV. Yeah. That is an extremely engineer's way to look at the, YouTube. The engineering knowledge that you pick up from university and high school, it's so applicable. It's just problem solving. Yeah. If you know how to problem solve, you can solve pretty much any problem. Unless it involves people. Because <laughs> people just ruin everything. <laughs> too, yeah, you can't data that. That's too hard. No, yeah. Normally, back in the day, when YouTubers were getting more popular, mm. they would move into sometimes traditional media or mm -hmm. some kind of project through traditional media. Is that something you aspire to do? Well, okay, so my goal since the beginning of university was I want to be an aerospace engineer. Oh, amazing. That's like I still 100% want to do that. And I have this idea in my head that at some point I will just stop uploading on everything and just disappear. <laughs> that's like, that's my 100% my plan. Amazing. Do a Jenna Marbles and just disappear yeah, from the literally. internet. Because you kind of just, there's three things that could go wrong or th three possible paths on the internet is you just keep increasing in popularity. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a good example. I'll go back to that one. Oh, Mr. Beast. Yeah. Mr. Beast, he's super popular, just keeps getting popular. Or PewDiePie. But he kind of links into the next one, which is getting cancelled. Mm -hmm. So you could be doing really well and something could go wrong or someone would dig up something that you said 10 years ago and then that's it, you yeah. could be done. And then the other one is you don't do anything wrong, but people just don't care anymore. Yeah. And then you just fade out of existence. Yeah. So a lot of really big YouTubers from the early 2010s they didn't do anything wrong, but no one watches their content anymore because mm. they're just not interested. Did you enjoy university? Yeah. I did, mm. but I think hindsight is making me think I enjoyed it more than I did. Yeah, because yeah, I feel that. The amount of times where I was just having an absolute breakdown driving home at 2am from Reed Library. <laughs> oh, gosh. But looking back at it, it was a good time in terms of the people that I studied with. Mm. One thing that I realized both at university and both in corporate, it's like 
who you work with is just as important as what you're doing. Yeah. Because once the people, this is one of the reasons why I left my job. Once the people were kind of removed from the situation, you're just left with the work. And it's like, do I actually like this? Yeah. Do I see myself doing this? Mm. And that's part of the reason why I left. But then university, I really enjoyed it because I studied mechanical engineering. I really liked my thesis topic. My thesis group was awesome. Had a bunch of friends doing the same thing. And yeah. I can't. I, I definitely miss the thesis part of it. So. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I've had anyone say that yet. I miss my thesis. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know that you do enjoy talking about your thesis, 100%. and you did. But do you do miss your thesis? Yeah. Thesis. Yeah. Thesis. My thesis. thesis. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell us what your thesis was? Sure. So my thesis topic. Well, keep in mind that I studied mechanical engineering. So okay. my master's was engineering, specialising in mechanical engineering. Mm-hmm. My thesis was free space laser links. What is yeah, that? It sounds cool, right? It, sounds it was, like a it was room actually cool. With just lasers shooting out around them. I mean, basically, it was in a dungeon because it was like lasers that would hurt your eyes. What? So you have to go to this special room and wear glasses and shoot lasers. What? I'm being 100% serious. How I actually chose the topic was I had the document of thesis things. It was like 200 pages long. Control F laser. <laughs> and there was like a few. And I was like, because I love lasers. Oh my God. I love amazing. light and all that kind of stuff. So I found that one. <laughs> Went to the interview. Thesis group. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I don't need to interview for a master's yeah. in. in I mean, you don't have to. Oh, for but lasers. I mean, like, if you want to make a connection and talk about the stuff, and they get a feel for you being excited about it, then yeah. why wouldn't you? So do it for the lasers. Do it for the lasers. Yeah. That, that should be a slogan I can put on a shirt. <laughs> hmm. My business mind is ticking. <laughs> I um. So what I'd be doing is going up to specific rooms in high buildings around the campus and mm. shooting lasers. And like timing responses and that what? kind of stuff. It was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Well, okay. Now it makes a lot more sense why you missed your thesis. You're yeah. playing with lasers. Yeah. I felt so cool as well. <laughs> like I'd be like at some crusty engineering lecture and everyone's like, oh, I have to go run a test on flow through a pipe in the water lab. And I'd be like, hmm, I actually have to go shoot some lasers <laughs> from the top of the medical building. Um, but the actual science behind it was really cool. And it was one of the things where electrical engineering scares me. It's so confusing to me. It's definitely the hardest thing that I ever did at uni. And this was kind of the intersection of mechanical and electrical. So kind of having the knowledge of the mechanical side and learning about electrical while doing my thesis was really cool. Mm -hmm. But that also made it really hard. Um, So basically, the research was timing the responses and then working out how to change the behavior of the beam to minimize the delay. Oh, okay. So it'd be like a feedback loop. Yeah. And then you change things in the loop to increase or change things. Frequency, I'm just kind of just saying words now. <laughs> but it, it, we're basically trying to work our way around wavefront aberrations, which is stuff that appears in front of the laser, okay. which could be actual physical things or behavior from the air. Like mm-hmm. a hot day behaves differently to a, a cold day. We would shoot lasers later at night because there's less stuff in the atmosphere. Can you see it? Like, can you see the yeah. laser? Yeah. Oh. But that's part of the reason why we had to go to the high buildings because it's the type of laser where if you looked into it, it might damage your eye. Mm. It was very low chance that it would actually damage your eye. But then lasers have a very strict safety protocol as they should. Yeah. So then that's why we'd have to do it at very specific points. But yeah. I can't mm. believe all this time. When would you have been doing that? 2018. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All this time people walk around uni unaware. You're up there, lasers shooting. Yeah, shooting campus. lasers and nobody knew. What's now the application for that kind of technology? So... Um, this is actually the coolest part about it. It's my favorite thing about my thesis was the first sentence. The first sentence <laughs> I was talking about, <laughs> I spent so long making this first sentence in my thesis, but basically I was saying that this research will help space communication because uh-huh. communicating from the ground to satellites, this kind of technology helps make that signal stronger or clearer yeah. and more efficient, less data loss, yeah. all that kind of thing. And then also satellite to satellite, I pretty much just love space. Yeah. So the fact that I got to talk about lasers in space was really cool. And that's why I want to get back to aerospace engineering. Yeah. Yeah. What is, do you think, the pathway to become an aerospace engineer? In Australia, just waiting. Really? Can everyone just get their shit together? (laughs) I want a job. No, um, the kind of jobs that I really want to do in aerospace are the design engineering Mm -hmm. part of it, like a rocket design engineer. Oh, I mean... I want to be a rocket engineer. I mean, come on. Yeah. But there isn't really that the space for that isn't very big in Australia. If I wanted to work for NASA, I can't. Yeah. Because okay. I'm not an American citizen. 
Oh. So I'd have to look in Europe, but obviously can't really work overseas right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of just taking a break and working on creative stuff until I see something that I really want to do. Cool. So I've got the feeling you're probably going to vibe with these questions quite a lot because these are our questionable questions. Let's go. Let's so they're do it. very strange. But to start off with, if you were an element, what would you be and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay. Why have I already got an answer for this? But I feel like <laughs> I like carbon. Mm-hmm. I feel like carbon is one of the coolest names for an element. Yes. It's just so succinct. <laughs> like there was that, what was that? Altered Carbon on Netflix was a TV show. Yes, it was. And having carbon in the title just elevated it. Yeah. Because if it was like altered aluminium, I'd be like, no. I could not care less no, about this. No, that's just a can. Yeah. Rubbish. Exactly. And carbon just like carbon. Yeah. So cool. So fresh, so fun. <laughs> but then also, I love steel. Obsessed Ooh. with steel. Yeah. When I do videos talking about like house tours and that kind of stuff, if the house has steel and glass, I'm so there already. You're there. So like the elements are going to steel, which is escaping me right now. Those elements are cool too. Okay, great. Yeah. I don't even know. I yeah. didn't do chemistry past year 10. <laughs> I got no idea. Carbon, yeah, carbon's in it. Perfect. Carbon is my brand. I yeah. think you knew that deep down. <laughs> Somewhere uh, deep down you knew that. What would teenage Mike think of current Mike? Hmm. I think I'd think I was pretty cool. Yeah? Because I was watching YouTube at that stage um, and channels my size I'd be watching. So I think that's pretty cool. I'd probably like, I'd probably be thinking, where is where are you in terms of aerospace engineering? Like, why mm. are you not doing that already? You're old. <laughs> You're so crusty. Like, why are you already an aerospace engineer? <sighs> but, um, you yeah, know, I think I'd, I think I'd like it. Are you glad that you weren't a teenager now and starting your channel as a 15-year-old? Oh, 100%. I talk about this to, like, some YouTube friends uh, all the time. I think there should definitely be some kind of age limit because there's an age limit to when you can make a YouTube account mm. and comment on things and like posts and watch videos. But then the actual other side of it, once you start becoming successful, especially some of these channels that just go from 10 subscribers to a million subscribers mm. in like two or three months, the changes that come with that in terms of your audience, your income, your responsibility, all that kind of thing, I struggle with that and I'm 25. Yeah. So when I see people who are 16 or 17, like Charlie D'Amelio having 100 million followers on TikTok, I'm like, how is she coping with mm. that kind of stuff? It feels very reminiscent to when you would have Disney Channel oh, yeah. people and they'd act out mm-hmm. and everyone's like, what is going on? Because it doesn't fit their family-friendly vibe. But just it's the same kind of situation of everything shifting so quickly and how does a young person's brain react to that? Yeah. So I would say don't make a YouTube channel, YouTube channel until you're 18. <laughs> how, well, how old were you when you started? I think I was... What year are we? We're 2020. I think yeah. I started in 2015. Okay. So 20. Yeah, responsible age. Yeah. What is your dream sponsorship? Oh, NASA. Oh. I don't even know why NASA would spo- sponsor <laughs> me. But they will one like, day. Maybe they'll be like, we need to send someone to the moon. We need to send someone to Mars. Send me, NASA. NASA, send me. <laughs> like when Lady Gaga nearly went to the moon to promote her art pop album in 2015, <laughs> that could be me. That. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things. The fun fact about that, this is not my actual fun fact, but fun fact, Lady Gaga was supposed to go to space in 2015 to promote her art pop album, (laughs) but the ship that they were going to send her on exploded on the test before she went. (gasps) Thank God she did not go. What would I do without Lady Gaga? Oh, what would any of us do? We wouldn't have anything released after 2015 from Lady Gaga. So stressful. Would you rather NASA sponsor you Mm. or Elon himself? Hmm. Good question. NASA. Oh. Because I would say NASA doesn't have their flagship social media person. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, if you think of SpaceX, you think about Elon Musk. Yeah. You think about NASA, you think about NASA. They could think about me. (laughs) Yes, they need a face. Exactly. I could be the face of NASA, even though they'll never work because I'm not an American citizen. They should branch out. It annoys me so much that I can't work for those American companies because it's Space stuff is technically classified as weapons. Whoa. So you need a weapons clearance, which you can't get unless you're an American citizen. That seems silly. But it kind of does make sense because rockets, at the end of the day, use the same technology as weapons. Yeah, I know. It's just really easy to get weapons in the US. Yeah. (laughs) They're like, you're Australian. Mm -mm." It's like, why are you being selective about this? Yeah. But, yeah. (laughs) 